See that right there? That's a plus. You know what that plus stands for? Well, I don't really know, but I know what, what's the difference between this one and the regular 9800 GTX. This one is a 55 NM GPU. The regular 9800 GTX is a 65 NM GPU. So they haven't really changed much on the card. What they have done is shrunken the die that they use to process, to fabricate that GPU. That's gonna make it run cooler. It's gonna be more efficient. Uh, you're gonna be able to overclock it further. Everything's gonna get better. Uh, and then because it's running cooler and more efficiently, they can actually give you higher frequencies from the factory. Now, this is the BFG version of the 9800 GTX Plus. They have two versions, the regular one, and this one, this one is the overclock. Does it say it on the box there? Yeah, check that out. OC, overclocked. So let's talk about some of the specs and frequencies on this card. Where is it important? What counts? Now, uh, it's still gonna have 128 shaders or stream processors or ALUs, whatever you wanna call them. Still the same amount, but these are gonna run at 1890 megahertz versus 1836 megahertz. So you're definitely getting a nice overclock there. It's probably about, I don't know, it's like what, eight or 9%, something like that. Also, 760 megahertz for the core clock versus 738 on the regular 9800 GTX Plus. Mind you, these are not versus 9800 GTX. These are the 9800 GTX Plus, the non-overclock version that I'm comparing to. What else do you get? Uh, DDR3, of course, just like on all the 9800 GTXs, including the pluses, is at 2250. So this is the first card you're gonna see an overclock in the memory. Going from the 9800 GTX to the 9800 GTX Plus, there was no overclock on the memory. So this is going from uh, 1100 to 1125, which double pumped since DDR3 is 2250. Uh, the 256-bit interface is still the same, same just as wide, but you do get 72.5 gigabits uh, per second of bandwidth on this versus the regular 70.4. So that's a nice little increase, not a lot, but you know, 2.8 gigabits per second is something. And when you're paying almost nothing to get this factory overclocked version, it might actually end up being nice, nice and worthy, uh, nice and worth it. Sorry, especially if you can actually sometimes find it cheaper, which you will down the road. Now, this card right now is a monster. Uh, pretty much, it's about the same speed, if not faster than the 4850. It beats it in a lot of the games that are out there and uh, it loses in a few, but overall I would say this is the better card and a lot of you guys already have NVIDIA boards. You have NVIDIA chipsets, you can't, you know, you can't run SLI uh, on a you know, X38 motherboard. So this is gonna be the perfect card for you and at the price point it's at right now, which is about $200, it dropped again. It was like at 230 when it first came out. Now it's like at 200 uh, when, the, when I'm filming this right now. So in a year from now, it'll be a nothing, but uh, it's gotten very, very cheap and it's probably one of the best bangs for the buck on the market. Now, what else do you get besides uh, uh, you know, just the card and the fact faster frequencies. Well, you get HDCP, so you can play your Blu-rays. You get DirectX 10. You get Shader Model 4.0, OpenGL 2.1. Uh, up to 16x anti-aliasing is on here. This thing is physics ready, so it has onboard physics calculations. It's you know transfers all that load from the CPU to the GPU to do your physics there. That's great. Uh, thank God that Nvidia bought the uh, the API from Agia for the physics and they ported it to this thing because it's running awesome. You guys probably might have seen the video on uh, CUDA and on physics. It's all ready to go on this. You can transcode videos on here. You can fold it home with this card. You can do all that stuff on board. Uh, let's see what else. Let me give you a quick tour of the card and show you what comes in the box. Check it out, check out the graphic first of all, pretty cool. Kind of scary, I'm kind of frightened now. Uh, let's uh, move on, if you look right up here, see that right there? That's your SLI connector. That's where you're gonna bring two of these together. Now, a question I'm getting all the time on my emails is, can I SLI this card with a 9800 GTX not plus version? Yeah, you can, same architecture, different uh, you know, die, it's smaller die, but everything stayed the same. So you can definitely run them. The, the 9800 GTX will be your limiting card. This one's gonna go a little bit faster than 9800 GTX, just because it's gonna run cooler and you're gonna be able to further overclock it than you would the previous one. So what else you get on here? Check that out. Dual link DVIs, two of them, both on board. Of course, let's do a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600. And let's say that you are still using a VGA monitor. There is your adapter that is nicely included in the box. Thank you very much, BFG. Did a good job on that. And also included in the box for people running a slightly older PSUs. These are the four pin Molex connectors that switch to six pin PCI Express. So these are very useful if you're running one of the older ones. And then something else that's very nice in the box, a nice little breakaway cable. Now, what do breakaway cables do? Well, pretty much on this side, it's an S-Video, seven pin digital. And on this side, it's, it's component. 
This actually lets you output 1080i to your high-def TV with just three cables. Very nice little useful feature to have on here. Now, this board, uh, this card is 10 and a half inches long. So it's not really that crazy big, but keep in mind, you know, you wanna make sure that it fits in your, uh, in your case. And it is, of course, double slot. So 10 and a half inches long, it's two, uh, two buses wide, and PCI Express 2.0, obviously, right here. And as far as power goes, two six pin PCI Express connectors are gonna be necessary. So make sure you have the proper power supply, 450 watt minimum. They actually recommend a little bit more if you wanna not go for the bare, bare minimum. You know, you guys don't wanna always use the bare minimum. It's gonna be better if you don't. You wanna make sure that you're stable. Uh, you know, when you're fully loaded for a long period of time, you wanna make sure that every, all the power is being provided stably, cleanly, equal voltages, uh, nice current, etc. So, great card, awesome for the money. I like it a lot, and if you run two of them in SLI, it's really, really fantastic. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me, and I will see you guys next time. For more information on the BFG GeForce 9800 GTX Plus OC video card, go to CompUSA.com and type in B52-9812 into the search box. Or you can always call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 1-800-COMPUSA.